Welcome to the 2021 On-Farm Network results series. I'm Megan Burns, agronomist for the On-Farm Network program. Let's get into our soybean row spacing trial results. So soybean row spacing trials are investigating the agronomic and economic outcomes of different row spacing comparisons. So the actual row spacings that we compare at every trial are dependent on what each grower is interested in and what their equipment can handle. So this year we had comparisons of 15 inches versus 30 inches, seven and a half inches versus 15 inches. And then we also had a seven and a half versus 15 inch spacing trial um, that varied seeding rate as well. And we'll look at those details in the individual site response. So mainly we're interested in yield difference with these trials, um, but we also started to measure canopy closure last season and we carried on with that in 2021 as well. So we'll see those results. So this map shows the five locations of our row spacing trials this season. And uh, just before we get into individual site results, uh, a note on our canopy closure rating. So we actually use just an iPhone app to capture these ratings and it uh, basically captures an image and spits out a reading of what the canopy closure is. So you can see um, what the, the app gives us and what kind of that true color image um, in the field actually looks like here. And we take our ratings at three timings. So R1, R3 and R5. Okay, so moving into our results for the individual trials, starting with the first trial here, which was that seven and a half versus 15 inch comparison that changed seeding rate as well. So this producer is actually interested in a higher seeding rate at the 15 inch spacing. Um, so looking at 180,000 seeds an acre compared to 130,000 seeds an acre at the seven and a half inch spacing. Um, now, a couple of notes on this site. It was pretty severely drought stressed, I would say, relative to some of our other sites this year. And it also had a lot of grasshopper pressure um, later in the season. So um, just a little bit of an asterisk by this site and its responses. Um, and you'll see things get a little bit strange with our yield response in a second here. Um, but looking at canopy closure, uh, overall, it was quite low. We usually see closures, certainly at seven and a half and 15 inch spacing, um, you know, that reach upwards of high 80s and into the low 90s by the end of the season in terms of closure percentage. So quite low, and, and that's the effect of that drought stress coming through. Um, but it was similar between the treatments uh, at R5 um, in terms of the extent of closure. Um, and this is the kind of that weirdness that I mentioned. Um, so we actually saw an increase, significant increase in yields here at the 15 inch spacing. Um, perhaps that was the result of, of the increased seeding rate um, in this case where we had you know, a lot of drought stress and maybe not, not the best survivability in our stands. Um, but uh, we didn't see when we took our plant stand assessments, um, significantly higher seeding rates, or sorry, significantly higher plant stands at that higher seeding rate in the 15 inch spacing. Um, so it likely wasn't that. Uh, if we take a look at what the yield values actually are, like they're quite low, certainly not anywhere near what normal would be. Um, so I think we can kind of set this trial aside as, as being pretty severely drought affected. And this is probably a question that's best to be investigated in another growing season under maybe some more normal um, production uh, um, conditions. So moving on to our next trial, uh, I was also comparing seven and a half versus 15 inch spacing. And the rest of the next four trials are all at a constant seeding rate. Um, the seeding rate will be listed on the next slide. So it's just the row spacing that's varying, not a seeding rate. Um, taking a look at the canopy closure here, um, it was uh, significantly uh, greater actually in the 15 inch spacing um, early in the year. Um, and then by R5, it, it behaved as we would maybe expect with a significant increase in canopy closure for the seven and a half inch spacing um, compared to 15 inch spacing. But you'll notice that, you know, we're talking about 93 and 92% uh, canopy closure being significantly different. Practically or agronomically speaking, those two values are very, very similar. And there's probably not much meaningful difference there from an agronomic perspective. Um, so closure was good in both um, the seven and a half and 15 inch spacing at this trial. And then if we take a look at um, our yield response, so there was no significant yield difference between seven and a half and 15 inch spacing here. Just a note on the economics or lack thereof for the rest of these um, row spacing trials. So for row spacing trials, we don't account for any differences in operating costs or equipment costs um, with the two different row spacings. It's so variable for each operation. Um, so it's something to think about and factor in how that would look. Um, perhaps it would lead to an eventual change in equipment down the road. Um, uh, depending on how things perform. Um, so something to think about when you're, when you're pondering these uh, row spacing responses or, or lack thereof in this case. 
Um, okay, so moving on, our next trial looked at 15 versus 30 inch spacing. And um, again, we have a situation where, you know, maybe by R5, uh, this doesn't make logical sense that uh, our statistics are telling us the 30 inch um, canopy closure is significantly greater than the 15 inch. That's not what we would expect to see. But again, 88% and 91%, like those values are quite close and your ability to discern them in the field is probably, um, probably um, pretty, it would be a pretty difficult thing to do. So again, practically or agronomically speaking, those two values are quite similar. And um, that's pretty decent canopy closure, certainly for um, a 30 inch spacing treatment to be upwards of 90%, that's, um, that's pretty good. And again, at that trial, we didn't see any significant uh, yield response um, between those two uh, row spacing treatments. So our next trial also looked at 15 versus 30 inch spacing. Um, here we have lower canopy closure again by R5, we're less than 70%. Um, this was another field that was pretty drought um, stressed. I would say it was on very, very sandy soil. Um, but we do have significantly greater closure in the 15 inch uh, spacing uh, compared to the 30 inch spacing, which is what we would um, kind of expect to see for sure. And we also noticed weed pressure differences pretty obviously at this trial. So all these little uh, yellow circles here are around volunteer corn plants. Volunteer corn was the weed uh, that seemed to uh, struggle to be controlled at this trial. And it was a lot more prominent in the 30 inch spacing compared to the 15 inch spacing, which was interesting. And obviously weed pressure is another one of those agronomic management sort of outcomes or situations to consider when you're thinking about the row spacing for uh, your production system. And this trial also didn't have a significant yield difference between 15 and 30 inch spacing. Okay, so our last uh, row spacing trial looked at seven and a half versus 15 inch spacing again. Um, this one had pretty good canopy closure, statistically similar canopy closure um, by R5 and um, looking at yield response, there was none again. So um, no significant difference in yield between seven and a half and 15 inch spacing at this location either. Okay, so if we kind of compile this with the other row spacing trials that we've had to date in the on-farm network, um, we just started row spacing trials in 2019. So we've only been at this a couple of years and this is a data set that I would say we're still continuing to build. So it's, it's newer and it's smaller, but across the um, network, there are 17 trials so far. Um, if we include that one significant response from this year uh, where things didn't behave quite normally, likely due to uh, the growing season conditions this year, We've had six significant responses, but we're going to go ahead and set that, that aside for the reasons we talked about. Um, so we're looking at five cases where narrowing the row um, increased uh, yield significantly. So five out of 17 cases. So that's about 30% of the time we're looking at having a yield improvement with a narrower row spacing. And if we take a look at how that kind of breaks down across the different row spacing comparisons we've made. So this bar graph shows our yield. Um, and the different row spacing comparisons for uh, our 2019 and 2020 trials. So this figure hasn't been updated with 2021 data yet, but remember that setting aside that one oddball significant response, we didn't have any significant um, yield differences in the 2021 season other than that one. So looking at 2019 and 2020, you'll notice that we have significant, um, where these boxes are significant uh, yield differences, and we have significant response um, uh, for each of the types of row spacing comparisons we've made. So we have response at seven and a half versus 15 inches where seven and a half is outperforming 15. Uh, we have that same situation at 10 versus 20 inches. And then in a couple of the 15 versus 30 inch spacing trials as well. And we're talking about yield differences from like one to 2.4 bushels per acre. So the next thing I want to just talk about briefly is if we look at kind of compiling our canopy closure data and looking at the effect that row spacing has on canopy closure. So this figure has our row spacings across the bottom and the percent canopy closure reading that we get from that app um, along the, uh, the y axis here and these are average numbers. Now, things are a little bit strange when we include 2021 data here. So keep in mind, we started row spacing trials back in 2019, but we only started canopy closure in 2020. So that's why this just starts for 2020 here. Um, but including 2021 data, things are a little bit strange. So we see that the trend lines are indicating we actually have an increase in canopy closure with increasing row spacing for R1 and R3 stages. 
Um, now, obviously, that doesn't make a lot of logical sense. And you'll also see that we, we have pretty poor kind of fit of the data around these trend lines or the trend lines don't fit the data um, super tightly, so to speak. Um, and, and that really just speaks to 2021 was a bit of a, a bit of an exceptional year in terms of conditions. Um, and I think like so much of what came out of 2021, uh, uh, moisture was just driving, um, driving so much of what we saw in terms of agronomic performance um, of different uh, treatments or management decisions. Um, so if we kind of set aside this sort of atypical nature of the 2021 season and these outcomes, and we just look at the 2020 trends, so the trends from last season, um, this is more what we would expect to see. And I think as we continue to fill out our row spacing data set with future trials in future years, this is very similar to what we'll see across, uh, across time and space as we build that data set. So here we have a uh, very clearly decreasing canopy closure as um, our row spacing widens and um, the difference um, in closure between the row spacings or the slope of that line uh, is less steep as the season progresses, which makes sense because as we approach the end of the season, we expect there to be more row closure overall. So this is reflective of what we would kind of expect to see logically um, and agronomically speaking in terms of canopy closure. And like I said, I think the data will continue to, to play out this way as we, as we build that data set out. Okay, um, so we'll certainly continue to look at row spacing trials and different row spacing comparisons as farmers continue to be interested in this question. Um, take a look at the extent and frequency of yield response um, under different growing season conditions and across time and space as we as we build this out. So a big thank you to all of our on-farm network participants. If you are interested in learning more, getting involved, or if you have a trial idea, please contact us at any time. Thank you.